because you'll always stay down. What's wrong with me? What did I do? What could I have done better? Maybe if I did this, maybe if I look better, maybe if I, maybe if I, maybe if I, and more times it has nothing to do with you. I don't like the discomfort of where I'm at right now. Like I want things to go back to normal, even though the normal was toxic. <laughs> never walked this road before you may have had similar experiences but you never walked this road before and sometimes it's about trusting this new process i'm choosing to be fragile let me boss up so i want you guys to see this as not the end it may be the end of a relationship but it's not the end of you hey guys welcome back to my channel hope you guys are doing well so a quick disclaimer i went to try and film today and i realized i could not find my film camera so i'm filming on my iphone so if the sound's different if the video quality is different i apologize but it's either you got good quality or you got a video right and i'm sure you guys need this video because i definitely needed to make this video <laughs> okay, and today we are talking about how to uncouple with someone it is breakup season guys i mean I feel like it's breakup season all the time, but I feel like as we get towards the end of the year, I think a lot of us are actually thinking and taking inventory over what are we doing and who do we want in our lives and who are the kind of people that we want to become and is this relationship serving me well? And if you're not having those thoughts, maybe the person that broke up with you is having those thoughts. So if you're watching this and you're going through a breakup, I'm here to empathize with you. It is not easy whether you were together five weeks, five months, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whether you're going for a divorce, a long-term relationship, a short-term relationship, or if you're just trying to get over a crush that you had. This, I be knowing. It's so funny because at the beginning of this year, I had a crush on two people. And at the beginning, I was like, well, at least my like my feelings are working. This is good. I'm actually liking someone. This is actually really, really good. And I remember like having a crush and being obsessed with these two people um, who never even knew that I had, had a crush on them and having to like get over them. It's weird to be able to get over someone that you never was with, but for me personally, and the reason why I can speak on this topic is because this year I feel like I've just been, you know, getting over, uncoupling, detaching from people. And I think that's the risk that you take when you are dating and when you're dating with a soft heart or you're dating, yeah, you're dating and, you know, things don't work out the way that you want them to and kind of having to have those come to Jesus moments. I've had many of those this year. And you know, sometimes when you get over someone, you're like, oh, that wasn't too bad. I can try it again. And you kind of throw yourself into it again. And then the cycle would continue. But I don't know about you guys, I ain't doing that next year. I ain't doing that next year. It's actually like, for people that are highly sensitive, I think breakups are probably very, very, very difficult. Even if you are strong, like, Breakups aren't easy, depending on the, the amount of time that you spent on this person, depending on how attached you were to that person. I mean, if you were married, it is deep. It's deeper than the breakup. It almost feels like a death of yourself. So I can't say I completely relate, but I don't have to relate to be able to give advice that has worked for me and that makes sense. So this video is going to be practical tips on how you can uncouple from someone. And I hate the concept of getting over something you can't get over something you have to get through it and it's honestly a day-to-day -day thing and i'm not gonna say that there isn't gonna be times when you're gonna dibble dabble like go backwards and then go forward i almost feel like that's part of the moving forward stage sometimes you have better days sometimes you have worse days sometimes you go back to the person sometimes you you are good and you're strong but I feel like those days are like, it's up and down, it's up and down. And like I said in my last how to get through a breakup video, like if you have to cry, then cry because it can be very painful to be alone after spending a considerable amount of time with a person as well as investing in that person. And I think a lot of people stay in relationships that they feel like are dead for the same reason sometimes we buy clothes, shoes or a gadget and we've spent so much money on this, it just comes in our house and we never wear it. We never use it it just sits there but every time we look at it it's like i spent so much money on you i can't throw you away so it just sits there because you feel like you wasted money and in this instance maybe you feel like you wasted time but i'm here to tell you there's no such thing as a wasted time as long as you have breath in your lungs and you have a new day there's a scripture that says um his mercies are new every morning honestly whenever i wake up to a new day it just feels so much more promising even though i may still have residue of the feelings from the night before it just feels so promising to have a new day and as we are going into the new year 
I want you guys to have that optimism that it wasn't a waste of time. You learned lessons. You are not the same person that you was. If you didn't go through this relationship, you may not be the person that you are or the person that you are going to be because sometimes it's hard to see ourselves past where we're at, but you have to understand it does get better. If you can look back on past relationships or when you felt like you were going to freaking die, and you didn't, and you and instead of dying, you actually rose. You actually rose higher than you were before. So I want you guys to see this as not the end. It may be the end of a relationship, but it's not the end of you. And there's so many different parts of like, there's so many different feelings that come with different scenarios, whether let's say this person ghosted you, this person rejected you, this person insulted you, this person abused you, or you broke up with them. Like, I don't think Eva is any better, but, I know how hard it is when you feel rejected and you feel like, well, what's wrong with me? Why didn't this person love me? Why didn't this person choose me? Why is this person moving on to someone else? Why is this person deciding to do life without me? And I know it can feel like rejection. It can feel like a dagger to the heart. It can feel like a stab in the back. But I'm here to tell you that you still have purpose. You are still valuable. You still have worth. Even if that person did not see your worth. And more times when someone leaves you, it's not because they didn't see your worth. It's that because they did see it and they wasn't deserving of it. They didn't deserve it. They don't know how to handle it. It's not because you're bad, it's because they're not good or you're not good for each other. And I think we have to become okay with saying that. We have to be okay with things not going the way that we planned it. And I know that, especially as women, we like to plan our lives. We like to think ahead. We plan the minute details and everything. And so for women, I, 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 I'm not gonna, discriminate but I do feel like we feel things a lot more deeper because we open up whole selves to people and when our hearts get broken it can be so hard to deal with so I say all of that to say that I feel you I'm here with you like we are here um this is gonna be quite a mellow video I'm feeling quite mellow at the moment <laughs> whenever I'm not here for, for a long length of time know that life is kicking me in the ass life is kicking my butt and i'm having to learn lessons i'm also learning as i'm teaching i'm also learning as i'm giving and sometimes that can be quite hard and difficult to learn lessons and also teach them at the same time but i thank god that it's not necessarily me like whenever i come on this channel it's not just me speaking like god want it god cares about you god cares about you whoever you are watching this video god cares about you and more times he's just using me as a vessel. It's not about Brini. It's not because Brini has all the answers. It's not because Brini knows everything. Like sometimes I know nothing, but then I come here and I give and I get a word from God and God uses me as a channel to speak to you guys. And and that's that's it. Like I can inspire you guys even when I'm going through things myself. But yeah, this video is gonna be quite mellow because I wanna really empathize with where you guys are at. It's not just about giving you guys the tips and the tricks. It's about actually sitting there and be like, yeah, babe, like it hurts, doesn't it? It sucks. It sucks. It sucks to be by yourself again. It sucks to feel like you have to start again with someone else. It sucks that that person disappointed you, let you down, destroyed your trust, betrayed you. Like it sucks, it, it really does. But firstly, I wanna talk about the benefits of letting go. Like it is letting go season, that like, we're coming towards the end of the year and there's a lot of things that we need to let go of. Not just relationships, negative mindsets, things that are hindering our growth, bad relationships, bad friendships, unforgiveness, like there's so many things that we need to let go of and letting go is not a bad thing when you look at trees and you see how effortlessly they let go of leaves and they make space for new ones that it just shows you that there's a purpose in letting go and even though you may not feel like there is or you may not see the purpose right now just know that there is a reason for everything that we go through and that nothing is wasted no lesson is ever wasted like god will use our trials and our tribulations and our pain and our hurt and our fears and our anxieties towards a better end, towards telling a better story. Like sometimes if you ever read a book or if you ever watched a film, sometimes if the story starts off bad, it always gets better. Or if the story starts off good, it always gets worse, right? But that's life. Life is up and down, yin and yang, like good and bad. And sometimes life is good and bad at the same time. Sometimes life is just good. 
and sometimes life is just bad but eventually these things start to level out but there is a lot of benefits to letting go you have your peace back you can have your clarity back you can have your sense of self back because when you get into a relationship it's only natural that you put the other person before yourself and a lot of people are like you shouldn't lose yourself in a relationship you shouldn't and you should love yourself and you should care about yourself but naturally if we're talking about loving someone to love someone is automatically you put in them before yourself that's what love is love is sacrificial right so one of the benefits of letting go is that you have more time for you what do you like right because i don't know if, if you're anything like me when i'm in a relationship or when i'm in a situation or i'm with someone it's like what do you want to do i don't know whatever you want to do like i'm a i'm a i'm gonna be down for whatever you want to be down for and that's not me just trying to be like a pick me i guess but it's just like like spending time with you makes me happy i don't really ask for much us i don't really ask for much in a relationship and i'm very very chill so sometimes it can be like i can be so focused on prior Prioritizing that person or making sure that person is good. I don't ever ask myself, like, what do I really want? You know? So letting go also helps you to prioritize yourself again. And for some people, it's like, well, I don't want to prioritize myself. I want to prioritize him. I want him back. And I know, and I get it. I get it. I get it. But honestly, what can you do? Right? And I'm going to talk about acceptance a little bit later, but what can you do? Like, we're here now. Like, and most of you watching this, you know it's dead. Like, you know it's done. Like, you could go back, but you know it's not the same. Like, there's too much water under the bridge. Like, the relationship is done it's over so i'm talking about what you can do to move forward to have a, a, a brighter better future a better outlook online and like i said another benefit of letting go is that you're actually making room for new leaves a new story a new tale to tell something new and i know that new sometimes feels annoying when you just want the old thing when i, when I went for my breakup last year that's like i was like i just want everything to go back to normal i don't like the discomfort of where i'm at right now like i want things to go back to normal even though the normal was toxic <laughs> I didn't want to have to deal with this new thing because more times it's like the new is unknown. The new is unknown. It's not predictable. We don't know it. And you know, they always say better the devil that you know than the devil that you don't know. But what if there's actually not a devil in the future? What if there's actually an angel? What if there's actually someone so much better for you? What about that possibility, right? So another good thing about a breakup is that it's about the person that you become through it, right? Trials, tribulations, hardships, difficulties, pain, they're all to make you into a better person. <laughs> And I know in this jellyback world where we don't want pain, we want we want perfect relationships, we want perfect skin, we want per the perfect body, we want the perfect friends, we want the perfect partner, we want the perfect perfect. Like we don't want struggle or pain, but there's no there's no crown without a cross, right? You have to go through things in order to get to the other side. And I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Nobody wants to hear that in 2022, going on 2023. Like nobody wants to hear about pain. They don't want to hear about struggle struggle love what <laughs> i'm definitely not for struggle love but sometimes it's painful even good things are painful so letting go can be painful but the person that you're becoming on the other end is going to be so much be more beautiful and it's fine if you don't see that for yourself right now sometimes it's hard for me to see for myself but i know it's not it's not gonna be it's not gonna be worse than going backwards or staying stuck and sometimes, even if we are in relationships where we feel like they're good, I think in most of us, deep down, if you do the work, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, you will realize that there, in that relationship, there were areas in which you were compromising in, there was areas in which you were settling in, there was things that you were settling for, but because you overlooked them, you became okay with them. But now that the relationship's over, you can actually go back and actually realize and say that, this wasn't God's best for me. It may have been the best for that moment, but long term forever that wasn't god's best for me and it is what it is it's okay we live and we learn and another benefit to letting go is the freedom that you'll feel and you may have to come back to this video and testify and be like when i watched this video i was told up from the flow up <laughs> i love american you guys are so funny um <laughs> you can testify and be like when i watched this video i was told up from the flow up but now in 2023 in july 2023 in february 2023 in december 2023 i got my boo i got the love of my life you treat them like the queen that i am we're engaged we're getting married i'm married there's a baby on the way like i'm looking forward to those testimonies because sometimes when you're in it it's hard to see past it but freedom is coming for you 
freedom is coming for you and you have to believe that freedom is coming for you on the other side of this there is freedom there is peace there is joy and there is love not just love from another man but love from god love for yourself so you all deserve love and i want to say right now i love you even if you're not feeling loved right now i want to say that i love you and you've got this and you'll get through it and so I wrote down a few things. I wouldn't really call them stages, but there's certain things that we need to um, walk through. And I believe the first one is acceptance. I think before acceptance, we fight against it. We fight against this decision. We fight against this either decision we made or the decision that the other person made for us. Because I, I, I know how hard it is when you break up with someone. That was my situation last year. But when, and that has its own pain, but it definitely is difficult when somebody makes the decision for for you like it it feels like it's taken away your power it's like someone dealt something to you that you didn't ask for and i think that can be really really painful but coming to terms with it and accepting it and i don't think i'll ever get past saying this but man's rejection is god's protection i believe that of my whole the whole bible of my being even if i am angry at god or that's not what i wanted god i don't care if you're protecting me don't protect me i want this person in the long run you'll see it but even in now you can see it that just because that person rejected you that isn't what you should focus on don't focus on the rejection focus on the protection and i feel that every time i have to uncouple with someone i know that god is protecting me from things that i couldn't even see or i couldn't anticipate i couldn't believe would ever happen and good thing for me good thing for you you'll never have to see it happen because god has protected you and even in even through that person's rejection god's got his hand over you god's protecting protecting you from that and that person may definitely have rejected you that's not the focus that can't be the focus because you'll always stay down what's wrong with me what did i do what could i have done better maybe if i did this maybe if i look better maybe if i maybe if i maybe if i and more times it has nothing to do with you <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. you may never know why the person rejected you why the person broke up with you why the person was unfaithful why the person treated you that way you may never know but you have to understand that man's rejection is god's protection and how good does it feel to know that you're cared about i got like eight billion people in the world but god's kind enough to shut that shit down for you to shut it down before it got any worse for you. I'm thankful for what God has saved me from. I'm thankful for the things that I didn't even see coming and he saved me and he protected me from. That even though in the moment it doesn't feel good, I know and I believe that God is good and his plans for me are perfect. My plans for me are mm -mm. crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Like my plans for me are back. Mm -mm like it's somehow my plans for me are somehow like my plans for myself are like 10 percent, and it's 10 percent of what i see is good i'm like yeah i deserve this god's like no you deserve a hundred percent not 10 percent, not 20 percent, not five percent but because for you you're from, you're looking from this perspective you're like but this is good i had a good man in comparison to who <laughs> in comparison to what you deserve maybe he wasn't so accepting that reality and getting proper perspective about it and that's what these videos do when you watch them it gives you a better perspective you before watching this video you may have been crying you may have been sad you may have been just low but me speaking to you and giving you a different perspective and showing you a different way to look at things makes you feel better so sometimes we have to change our, our view on things our idea of things and then allow that negative voice or condemnation or self-criticism of judgment to have the final say look at things from god's perspective he's so much higher than us his ways are so much higher than us he knows way more than we do our understanding is so limited his is expansive which brings me on to the second thing which is to trust trust god but trust the process trust the process has been my word for this year because sometimes life comes at you fast baby like sometimes life comes at you fast hard and fast and we have to trust the process we have to trust the process the every day the every minute the every moment the ups and the downs the highs and the lows the bumps in the road that we have to trust the process and be patient which is the next thing patient 
be patient with yourself don't be too hard on yourself in this season it's hard enough what's happening to you don't also be an extra critic an extra burden an, an extra nuisance and i know one thing that i struggle with and one thing that people always say to me is like really you're so hard on yourself and i'm like i know I have such high expectations for myself. And it's like, just be easy. Like, you've never walked this road before. You may have had similar experiences, but you never walked this road before. And sometimes it's about trusting this new process. And I'm going to go into practically what that looks like in a minute. But the last thing that I want to talk about is hope. You have to have hope. You have to have hope that things will get better. Like, to be hopeless is the worst place to be on earth. To be hopeless is the worst place to be on earth. You have to have something worth living for. Even if it's just one thing. Even if it's for your family, your child, your clients, your colleagues. Whatever it is, have hope. Things get better. They do. They do get better. You have to believe that. They do get better. Weeping may enjoy for an, endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And things will get easier. These emotions that feel so heavy right now, they'll get easier as the days go by. Trust the process, have hope for the future, which is what I'm going to go into now. And I want to give practical tips on how you can really detach yourself from that person. And what I'm going to say is not going to be easy. These tips are not going to be easy. And you may have to put this video on the back burner for a while until you're actually ready to do these things or to walk out these tips. But when you're ready, sis, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here for you. But for those of you who are ready to put in some of these practical tips number one is you either have to block delete or rename this person and i'll start with the renaming thing because this for me has always worked because those of us who have phones so i'm assuming you all have phones um when you was with that person there was a certain sensation that you felt when that person's name came up on your phone whether you renamed them hubby with like five emoticons or you had a pet name for them had a short name the, the feelings that came up when you saw that person calling you like they were good feelings they were feelings of oh, my boo my baby my husband my fiance my boyfriend my boo my babe like there was those positive feelings that came up so having them still in your phone as that is almost setting you back into the past and the past that isn't the present because the relationship is over the person you you're, you're still thinking this person is is not the person that you had before like they're not the same anymore it's a different it's a different season it's different different okay and me personally, when I've gone through these situations, I've had, I renamed them to the past. I've renamed them, let it go. Like whatever I needed to rename them as, as long as it wasn't the name that was coming up before when everything was good, right? And what that does is like, it renames them. It renames the season that they play in your life. And when you go to call them or you think about calling them or they call you, it's not that good, those gushy feelings you're feeling anymore. There is a sense of detachment happening. And that's what this video is about. About today is about how to detach from the person right so renaming is a good one if you don't want to block them if you don't want to delete them renaming is a good one or for those of you that need to block and delete do that i almost i feel like renaming comes first eventually you'll go on to block them and eventually go on to delete them or if you're like me block delete no rename block delete <laughs> all of it like just get them out of your phone book right get them out of your life out of sight sometimes is out of mind and some people feel like well that's a bit childish blocking them it's a bit da -da -da. doesn't matter like we're not here to be rational like well, it, at this day it's not about being rational and whether that person's like oh how childish they blocked me the relationship is over what more do you want from what me? more do you want from me <laughs> The relationship is dead done and dusted what what do you want me to do right but everyone's situation is different this is what works for me blocking deleting and renaming or renaming blocking and deleting eventually um because it just it creates a different shift all i'm gonna say is try it out and you'll know what i mean the second practical tip is i say it's a practical spiritual tip and for those of you who are believers that believe in god that believe in soul ties this is usually after the tears and after the cry and after the denial and after the acceptance i go through a process of breaking soul ties because i recognize that sometimes the reason why it's so difficult to get over this person is because your souls are tied to them if you are sleeping with a person if you are emotionally connected to them if you are spending ample amounts of time together, they, if you're exclusive with a person you are going to create a soul tie and they soul ties get deeper and deeper through experiences through time through connection through sex these soul ties get deeper and sometimes the reason why we feel like we cannot move past this person this person keeps pulling me back is because you have a soul tie so what i like to do is go through a process of breaking soul ties and it's a prayer and what i'll do is i will i'll put my prayer the prayer that i pray down there but unless you have faith there's no point in praying the prayer because for me like it works for some people i've only had to pray it once and continue through this process but for other 
people it's a continual prayer like is it every day what i break this soul tie i sever this tie between me and this person anything that i gave to them may it be returned to me everything anything i have of theirs may it be returned to them prayer is so key in severing the tie spiritually because one thing you guys have to understand is that relationships aren't just physical they're physical emotional and they're spiritual okay so it's easy to do the physical things or the emotional things we don't do the spiritual thing the spiritual thing actually has the the, the tightest bond the tightest bond that you have with a person is spiritual okay like i said especially if you are sleeping with a person so soul ties breaking soul ties through prayer highly recommended okay 10 out of 10 works like a charm but like i said you've got to believe it not only that but if you get yourself attached to that person again you have to pray it again okay so make sure you're really at that point where you're like done okay and break that soul tie the third practical tip i will say is to keep a journal of your progress okay i said talked about trusting the process before and really in order to trust the process you have to go through it like you have to go through it so what i do is i write day one i talk about how i feel i talk about what the feelings that have come up i keep it all the way real it's only me reading this so no point lying to myself i keep it all the way real how i feel about the person if i'm angry if i'm sad if i'm bitter if i'm da -da -da. and when you look back you'll realize how up and down it is but eventually the days get easier for some of you it may be you just broke up a day ago or a week ago a month ago or a year ago like it's different for everybody and the process is going to be different but what i find really helpful is to journal that experience and it's just like talking to myself equally if you're not a journal laugh if you don't really feel anything doing that i de definitely highly recommend you talk to a therapist therapy can really really help you through a breakup to give you a better perspective i do enjoy self-help and i do enjoy practical examples and tips i'm also aware that some people can't do it by themselves and that's not a slight to you sometimes we need help sometimes we need other people i'm a professional breaker up but no i'm joking i'm not professional at all every time it hurts sometimes even worse than it did before but i'm just joking like, i'm not professional i don't think any of us are it hurts because we're women and we have emotions we have feelings and we attach meaning to feelings and feelings to meaning and it can just be crazy but like i said if you need support speak to a therapist equally speak to your friends and your family about it speak to a pastor speak to someone that you trust speak to your mom speak to your father like talking about it is actually therapy and they may not have the solutions for you but i think that talking talking about it is half the battle um because the worst thing that you can do is stay silent and allow this breakup to eat you up alive that's how people commit suicide like you have to talk about it let someone know let someone be aware don't feel shame about it speak to someone that you can trust another really practical tip that i want to give you guys is don't focus on the positives of the relationship and i know this sounds a bit wild but unless you're going through a breakup like you you don't understand because i think as women we have the tendencies to focus on all the good and that's why you miss him because you're focusing on all of the good times you're focusing on all the good memories unfortunately i don't know what happened in our brain but when we go through a breakup we have a tendency to just focus on all the good things and that's what makes us go back but then you realize you go backwards and you realize that everything wasn't good like your mind is lying to you and trying to deceive you and say that everything was good so don't focus on the positive relationships focus solely on the negatives of the relationship like i said it might sound wild but trust me focus on the negatives because there were many negatives about the relationship okay sometimes we want to put on our rose tinted glasses and be like no he was like the best person ever anyone like him and the problem with i've never met anyone like him was the, he was the first person to two or he was the only person has ever done or he was the best at the, 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 the filling in the blanks is that we always compare the person we are with with, with the ex and the ex is just not the person to compare anything to because they were trash they were bad so you for you to stop at this person and be like this is the best i've ever been treated da, da, da. if they can treat you better than your ex that means that you're this that that means that your future person can treat you better than this ex okay so don't use this person as a barometer and think that that's all you're ever gonna get so don't focus on the positives you already know those right you know them verbatim and they keep running and running your head running and running your head running and running your head focus on the negatives and write them down as part of your journaling write down all of the negative things all the negative experiences that you had with them the negative words they spoke to you like even this negative of this breakup write it all down because i'm sure it'll start to come back to you and you'll realize like this relationship was not all rosy peaches and cream no it wasn't the next practical tip is to write down all of the qualities that you are looking for in the perfect match not the perfect person but the perfect match for you because like i said your ex probably wasn't the perfect person for you and there's a lot of things that you overlooked for the sake of love now let's start thinking about the future let's start envisioning a better future for you start writing on all the qualities that you need in a person you might have to revise your list that you've had for years or even revise the list that you thought that that person 
person ticked off, right? Let's start revising that list. Let's actually start writing down what you truly, truly deserve. And I think that will give you a focus for the future, for the next person. And I'm not saying that it's about meeting that person tomorrow. It's not even about that. It's actually give you hope that things will get better, that you can be treated like this again and better. You will have love in your life and better. Okay, and with this, you want to you know, gather examples. I'm not really a relationship goals person, but I'm sure there's couples that you look up to, whether it's in your personal life or celebrities. Um, obviously, I prefer you to use personal life um, examples because you know them. They can't really lie to you, right? But whatever it takes, like use those examples to encourage yourself, to inspire yourself, to move forward. I truly believe that the best that God has for you is out there. Believe it. The next tip I will give you guys is to build yourself up with self help videos or relationship videos again they're practical tips okay um these are not necessarily solutions i'm just saying that they help with the process okay these are things that helps me okay so first improving yourself self-improvement is super important because you get back to feeling yourself and you get back to focusing on yourself like i said before when you're in relationships our focus is, is divided on us and the other person but most of the time mainly on them so you want to get back to yourself so you want to do things that are going to develop your character develop your personality develop your 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 outward appearance and it's not a time to go and like get surgery and start changing things about you because you think oh the person that he's with is like this or whatever or maybe he didn't he, didn't, he broke up with me because i had a flat ass maybe he broke up with me because i was too big or whatever it is and now is not a, now is not the time to start doing that kind of stuff okay because you're not in your total right mind okay that can come later if you if you so wish however it's not about changing yourself it's about improving yourself and becoming the best version of yourself and only you know what that is only you know what that looks like Again, building yourself up on relationship videos. Um, my personal favorite when I'm going through a breakup is Tony Gaskins. Um, just because like he just gives me the game. He just gives me the game like straight no chase up. Like he's just like boom boom boom. This is the reason. Blah 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 blah. Male's perspective. I'm just like, okay, Tony, thanks. But like only positive video content on relationships. None of this men are trash. This and that. Blah blah blah. Duh, 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 duh. You know what I mean? Like not negative content positive uplifting inspirational relationship content whereby it talks about personal accountability where you can see where you went wrong in a relationship where you can actually start to learn more about the opposite sex improve your relationship with the opposite sex make yourself ready for the the next person that's coming those are all helpful things that are forward facing future facing it's not going to keep you stuck in the past because a breakup has a tendency to keep you stuck and that's not helpful for anyone so i'm still giving you practical tips i'm kind of going to whiz through them a little bit quicker because i'm realizing this videos a bit long um however the next practical tip is to get a scripture that speaks to hope that speaks to future my personal scripture is luke 1 45 and it says blessed is she who has believed that the lord will fulfill his promises to her i'm only concerned about god fulfilling his promises to me i know what god's spoken about me concerning my life concerning my, my career my relationships so i hold on to those promises i hold on to those hopes so a practical tip is to find a scripture that speaks to you that speaks to hope yeah the next practical tip is to accept and to settle within yourself that you are going to be alone for this next season and i know some people say the best way to get over is one person to, is to get under another person and let me know how that works for you but like nah rebound is never the answer for a heartbreak because you end up hurting another person bringing them into your whirlwind of confusion and heartbreak it never works for anybody but accept that you're going to be by yourself and you're going to be single for this season and it doesn't have to be bad you can actually be happy by yourself and if you don't feel like you can be happy by by yourself that means that there's work to be done on you hence the reason why you should get into therapy why you should get into therapy <laughs> except this is a new season for you it's single season surround yourself with people that are also in that season who are, or who have been in that season for a long time because they'll give you um a good perspective especially if you've been in a relationship for a long time you don't even know what being single is and can i just let you know that there's nothing out here in these streets i don't care if you're in the uk or ukraine hey shh <laughs> there ain't nothing out here in these streets okay and that may be a temptation for you to go backwards but trust me there's nothing out here there was also there's nothing there anymore of your ex so the only thing you can do is come to terms of being single and being by yourself and it's gonna get lonely and it's a worst time to be single because it's so cold outside but find yourself some friends find yourself a family to be in involved in to even if it's not your family someone else's family like get involved uh build community go out um surround yourself with people that are like you meet new friends Friends, meeting people like it will definitely help you but come to terms with the fact that you're going to be single and you won't and you won't die trust me 
I haven't died yet, but you, you'll be all right. Next practical tip is to understand that feelings are not permanent, that this too shall pass, okay? Even this, even these feelings you're feeling right now will pass. Nothing is permanent in this life, okay? Like I said, you're gonna be, you're gonna have high highs, you're gonna have low lows, and sometimes you're just gonna be numb. But it's okay, because feelings are not facts. Take them in, let them go, okay? Do not make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings. Trust me, it ends in disaster. Okay. The next practical tip or practical spiritual tip is to get closer to God. Um, there's nothing like a breakup to send you into the arms of God. <laughs> There's nothing like a breakup to send you straight back into the arms of God where you should have been in the beginning. But yeah, God's not like petty. Like, see, I told you so. I told you to listen to me. Like, God's not petty. God is always there with open arms, ready to welcome you back. And sometimes you need, you need a stronger relationship with God is so much more important than a strong relationship with a person. Trust me, God is consistent. When that person comes and goes, God is consistent. God was here before I got here. He'll be here after I leave this earth. Like God is the only consistent person in this, in this earth and he's the only one that's gonna have your back fully, okay? So work on developing that relationship with him, getting closer to him. I'm gonna have a video about that very, very soon. Coming very, very soon. But I really feel like it's one of the biggest keys and don't think that this is in a list of, don't think that this these practical tips are in a list of importance because no, it's all important okay so yeah get closer to god get closer to friends get closer to community yeah that will help you the next practical tip i will say is to become responsible for your own happiness again there's a tendency in relationships to give the responsibility of your happiness to the other person to give the key to the other person and when you are outside of that it's very very important that you become responsible for your own happiness i know when i went through a situation where the person kind of ended it with me i was chasing them like no you make me happy happy so make me happy because I'm not happy right now and I realized it was because I was giving the responsibility of happiness away instead of being responsible myself for my own happiness and I hope that makes sense that's the simplest way I can put it I'll become responsible again for your own happiness and look after yourself I, honestly when I'm in a relationship with someone or I'm in a situation I'm the biggest baby like I'm like daddy like look after me make me feel good stroke my arms hug me kiss me I'm the biggest baby like when I'm in a relationship I'm the biggest baby and so I, I actually st stopped looking after myself and not in a sense that you think oh Brina is not Brina is always gonna look good like period <laughs> like, uh, you'll never see me lack it like you won't see but I'm talking about looking after myself emotionally uh, mentally physically as in like doing things going places yeah sometimes I just, just want to be I want to be booed up like I want to just close out the world I don't want to do anything I want to go anywhere I want to make a new video I don't want to do anything I just want to be booed up I just want to be booed up that's not good so don't stop looking after yourself start looking after yourself again think about what's going to make you happy do things that feed your soul that make you glad that make you happy that make you smile do those things and get out into the world because sometimes we can be stuck in our own bubble we can be stuck in our own bubble and especially with social media social media if you go on social media if you go on Twitter you see it go on Instagram people are feeding to you what to think about certain things how to feel about men how to feel about women how to feel about relationships how to feel about marriage how to feel about this and, this, and like that's your bubble that you created by following these people right step outside of your bubble and realize that we don't see the world how it is we see the world how we are it's all coming from ourselves so pop that bubble and step outside your bubble meet new people try new hobbies me personally i'm trying to get into kickboxing and funnily enough someone dropped something through my letterbox and i'm like kickboxing i was like answered prayer like i love kickboxing and i, I like I love it. And that's one thing that I want to do for myself that I've been putting off. So on top of that point, the next tip I'll give you guys is to set a new focus, plan a new trip, set a goal to get fit, start a new business adventure, volunteer, do something that isn't, has, any, has nothing to do with this person, nothing to do with relationship, nothing to do with it. Get a new focus and focus all of your attention. All that attention that you was giving this person, focus it on something else. I can't tell you what that is. I know what it is for me, but you know what you wanna do, you know the dreams and the goals that you wanna, that you wanna achieve, but make that a focus. Never make a manual focus, man. Yeah, it's detrimental. They'll drive you insane. And the last thing that I will say, it's not really a tip, but I wanna let you guys know that missing someone is actually a part of moving on, point blank period. Missing someone is not a reason to go backwards. It's not. And I know for me, the last person, the last breakup, <laughs> breakup that I went through was so short-lived. Like the, the whole relationship was so short-lived. The relationship was so short-lived, but I cannot begin to explain to you how difficult, how difficult, lip gloss in here. I can't begin to explain to you guys how difficult it was to move on. Everything, and I mean 
everything reminded me of this person. And I'm just like, the hell? This is probably the shortest relationship, situation I've ever been in, but it's taking me the longest to get over this person. And I'm just like, why? What's going on? But missing someone is not a reason to go backwards. It's actually part of moving on. And I want you guys to know that. And it's okay to have feelings of missing someone, but you have to, you have to stop giving in to those feelings. My friend gave me great advice and she told me to be strong, be strong. And something about telling someone to be strong is that it just kind of makes you go, actually, yeah, I can be strong. I am being weak. I I'm choosing to be fragile. Let me boss up. Let me boss up. I can be stronger than this. And you can be strong too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you see a new perspective, a new way, a new way of looking at these things. Give us a thumbs up. Please share your stories down below if you don't mind. And it'll be good for me to read. It'll be good for other people to read it as also part that are also going through this situation as well. That are also going through a breakup as well. And I want you guys to know that we're in this together. But this is a great time to let things go. We're going into a new year and we've got to be focused. There's better things that are coming. The best is yet to come, sis. Don't do it in the past. It's the past for a reason. It happened. Let's move on. Let's go forward. Okay? All right, guys. Make sure you guys give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. More content coming very soon. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.